Greetings, everyone. It's the New York Thrifter here, and I have a little bit of a cold, but that is not going to stop me from bringing you this video, which is all about vintage. Recently, I was able to go to a wholesaler, a vintage wholesaler, and buy a bunch of pieces. And I did a lot of research, and I wanted to bring this to you and show you how I get my uh, vintage together, how I date it, and how I sell it. And something also very exciting is I have a, a in a person vintage event coming up. Uh, this is along with the Fashion Institute of Technology in New York City. I am going to be at the Brooklyn Army Terminal on December 8th and 9th selling my vintage. If you want to go down to the description, uh, you can get all of the details. If you want to come and visit me and put a face to the hands, I would love to meet you. Uh, it's free to the public. You don't have to buy anything. Just come on in and find me. And I would love to talk all things reselling. So again, uh, it's coming up on Saturday. Saturday and Sunday. Uh, just look in the description below for more information. So let's get on to the vintage haul. So what happened is I have a friend of a friend who knows somebody that is uh, that buys estates. So they go into somebody's house um, who wants to sell their estate, their, their entire estate, and they take everything out of the house and they give a flat fee for it and they bring it to their warehouse and then they sell it in different ways and they don't really have a way to sell vintage they don't come across too much vintage but when they do they don't really have a way to sell it so oftentimes they end up donating it well the friend of the friend got a hold of the friend who got a hold of me that said hey I know that you do reselling would you be interested in coming and looking at some of our pieces and I said absolutely so their warehouse was only about 20 minutes away in New Jersey, and I drove there. I walked away with two giant cardboard uh, wardrobes full of vintage clothes and also some non-vintage, which I will show you. And I dragged it home and it's some of it is in really rough shape. And so what I'm going to be doing is I am going to be taking it to the dry cleaner um, because you're going to see somebody put this these pieces in their closet and for probably a couple decades forgot about it. So it doesn't really have necessarily any smells to it. It was well taken care of in that way. But as you're going to see, sometimes the hangers would leave little um icky bits or even just dust on the clothes and so that has to be washed off so I am just going to start this is how I brought it home on the hangers that they had it at the the wholesaler and I'm just going to go through piece by piece telling you what I know about the designer uh, where uh, it could be sold and any other pertinent information like the uh, time period that it was created so let's get started uh, first up we have this Victor Costa. And after doing a little bit of research on the Vintage Fashion Guild, a website that I'm going to take you to in a little bit, I found out that this is probably a dress uh, made in the 1980s. And so that's what I'm going to be marketing it as. Oh, sorry, bumped my camera there. And this is just a long uh, it's kind of satiny gown. It's got some very, very large beads on it. It also has some crinoline on the inside to make it poof out. So it's it's a rather fancy, it would be definitely considered a more formal dress. It goes kind of midi length. And the side, or it does have the uh, USA, made in the USA. A lot of vintage, especially American designers, have this made in the USA. Uh, Victor Costa, he actually worked in Texas, and so this was made in the USA. I don't see any um, size on this. However, the woman's estate, she was plus size, and so you're going to see later on, uh, she wore anywhere between size like 14 and 18, so I'm guessing this probably goes along the same route. So for something like this, um, it would probably be, I'm going to end up selling it. If I get maybe 60 or $70, I would be very happy with this. Um, on eBay, the comps for a dress like this is between maybe 50 and 100 On Etsy, it's between 50 and 350 And on Poshmark, it's between $10 and $50. Now, when I go through each one of these pieces, I'm going to try to go through all three of these markets um, just to show you, depending on where you resell, where could be the best place for you. Now, 
I got pretty much all designer pieces where I went and I have found through research that designer pieces don't necessarily do vintage pieces don't necessarily do the best on Poshmark that eBay and Etsy are probably the two best selling platforms for it with eBay being the faster sale Etsy being the one that uh, you generally can command a higher price. And so just keep that in mind as we go along. I will uh, tell you any outliers that I find. Um, so, so yeah, so this uh, Victor Costa, hopefully around $60. Okay, up next, let's open this up. Now, you're going to see that some of these pieces actually are new with tags. Uh, the woman that purchased them never wore them. And so this is one of them. This is new with tags, Carlisle. And this is a herringbone wool suit size 16. So here, and it's got beautiful, beautiful uh, stitching on the end made in Hong Kong. And here is the skirt that goes along with it. Again, Carlisle here. Um, I don't think it has the original um, price on it, even though it has the original stickers. This is really cool. This is a zipper for the slit in the side. So this Carlisle is probably not that old. I would say probably the late 90s to early 2000s. So you're kind of really pushing up against that vintage time frame. Now, if I was going to sell this on eBay, it looks like I would probably get around maybe uh, $40 used. And so new, you could maybe put that up to 60 or 70, maybe even $80. If you would take it over to Etsy, maybe even $100. And then on Poshmark, uh, this brand doesn't seem to do as well. And we're looking at between maybe 15 or $30. And so this one would be one I would definitely uh, I'm, I'm thinking um, just putting it up on eBay because I don't want to uh, mess with Etsy. If it's not vintage, I don't want to get in trouble over there. This is actually handwoven. Nikos is the name. It's handwoven. Uh, this print does really, really well. I was really surprised to find it. I had never heard of it before, but these handwoven knits seems to do really well. On eBay, there has been some recent sales for $75 and $225 for pieces similar to this. And on uh, Etsy, you can find this for around uh, $350 without new with tags. And on Poshmark, we're looking at about $90. So it would be an interesting to see where it would do the best. Probably cross list this, cross post it at both eBay and Etsy and see where it does the best. But look at that. I love how these... Uh, these arms are, the whole thing is just really, really well made. So that is Nikos handwoven. Okay, now this is a hanger like I was talking about how because it was left in a closet for a couple decades, it kind of started to degrade. So I'm going to take that off carefully, put this aside, but you're going to notice on the inside, we've got a little bit of that hanger foam. So what I'm going to do is I, I'm going to take this to the dry cleaner, but before I do that, I'm going to lint roll it really well to try to get as much of this off as I can. And this is a Stanley Platos and it is a silk dress. There we go. It has the Saks Fifth Avenue, new with tags. It was originally $1,500, size 12. And it's got a very graphic print, and it also comes with a belt. So I looked this up. I did not recognize the name, and it looks on eBay. Two of these recently sold for $35. On Etsy, between $30 and $100 is a pretty standard fare. And on Poshmark, between 
uh, 12 and $60, but only four have sold. And so it just depends on where you want to take it. Um, now, somebody is going to ask me, well, wait a second, if this is new with tags, how are you going to get it dry cleaned? In a situation like this, what I might do is I might remove these tags. And so it would no longer be new with tags. I would take it to the dry cleaners, get it dry cleaned, because getting this off is going to be very important. And then when I go to list it, I will let the buyer know exactly what I did. Say it was new with tags, but it had to be dry clean. The tags were removed. And just let them know exactly the story of what is what is going on with this silk dress. It's got a great super graphic black and white pattern. We have got two pieces by the same designer here. And that is Scassi. I want to say and both of them are very graphic with polka dots this one is a silk size 14 dress very very bright short dress with long sleeves and after doing a little bit of research um, Arnold Scazzi was a Canadian living in Montreal he started his line in the 50s, but after looking at the tags, these are both uh, 90s dresses or a dress in a suit. And um, it looks like these on eBay go for between uh, $35 and $200, just depending on uh, the brightness, the brighter the better, along with the pattern, polka dots seem to do very well. On Etsy, it looks like they're going for about 120 to 150 plus. So that is great news. And on Poshmark, uh, we're looking at like maybe $20. So again, Poshmark just doesn't seem to be the place to take these. Now, this is the first time I removed the hanger. And what I'm seeing is there is definitely some rust staining on this. So I'm going to take this into my cleaner, see what he wants to do with it, if we can get that out with dry cleaning or anything else. And this was new with tags, size 14, originally $350. It kind of makes me sad when I see these old dresses with the tags still on them. I wish that uh, the woman who bought these was able to wear them and enjoy them instead of just ending up in her in her closet but as you can see there's a little bit more stains on the inside of this piece so this is going to need a lot of work but we'll see what we can do to resuscitate uh, that suit we've got round number two starting out with Adele Simpson and Adele began her career in 1949. She uh, really grew it, and in the 70s and 80s is when she really made a name for herself. This dress is going to be from the 80s, and it has lots and lots of uh, staining on the inside, so we're definitely going to have to see if we can get that out. Also, I see a little bit of, oh, sorry, a little bit of a hole here. So that will definitely have to be disclosed when selling. But this is just a very long, bright kind of red orange wool dress. And I don't think it has the belt either. So this one's gonna be kind of problematic, but that doesn't mean that I'm giving up. Now, if you look this brand up online, it looks like on eBay for reselling, you can get about 40 to $100. Of course, that's without any flaws. On Etsy, between maybe 40 and 50 and on Poshmark between 20 and 30. And so it can do really well if it's in really great condition. This next one, you're probably gonna recognize, not because of this name, but for a name that is sold at QVC. Now this is Coos, which is part of the Coos of Course uh, empire and Coos of course is sold at uh, QVC and that's a more modern day. This is the vintage piece by Coos van der Acker and if you actually get the Coos by van der Acker it's uh, worth a lot more than the Dewild Coos. However a jacket like this can still do really well. Um, you can see there's a lot of details in it, a lot of different textures in the fabric 
very, very well designed. And a piece like this on eBay goes for maybe around $100. And on Etsy, you're looking at closer to maybe 130 or 150. Poshmark really doesn't have uh, many of this on, so there's no real comps for this on Poshmark. This is probably my favorite of the whole bunch because this designer is still designs to this day. She's incredibly well known. Her name is Carolina Herrera, and you've already heard of her on my. Uh, on my videos before just because whenever I find her I get very excited and want to share. Uh, she began designing in the 1980s in her uh, native uh, country of South Africa and she was considered a socialite designer because she was kind of a style icon, wealthy, would go to parties and uh, people would watch what she would wear and she kind of launched that into her own brand where she would sell her own pieces. And so after doing a little bit of research on this, it looks like this is from her slightly lesser expensive uh, brand, her diffusion line, CH, that was very popular in the 80s. And for uh, eBay, you're going to look and you're going to find that a lot of these pieces can go between 100 and 150 on Etsy, possibly even more than 150. And then on Poshmark, there's not much of a market. So we're looking at maybe... Uh, you know, $50. And so definitely an eBay or Etsy would be the way to go. Now, this is very bright. Uh, Carolina Herrera is definitely known more now for her uh, little more subtle, uh, elegant designs people wear to the Oscars, say. And so this is not necessarily what is in style for her now, but still an absolutely beautiful piece. And I just love the micro pleating in in the skirt. Okay, I have a few pieces by this designer. Her name is Diane Fries. And let me open this up so we can see. Here we go. And this is 100% silk made in Hong Kong. After looking at this label, I know that it is going to be from the 1980s. And Diane Fries, she did these really wild prints that she's very well known for. A lot of very long, um, luxurious dresses, bright colors. And if you went to sell a vintage Diane Fries on eBay, you're looking at between $20 and $70. On Etsy, it's closer to 50 to 180. And on Poshmark, believe it or not, you can get a pretty good price on these, um, even sometimes 100 or $150. So, and I think that's probably because um, this would really appeal to people who are looking for that, uh, you know, bohemian vibe, festival vibe. It definitely goes along with that. I have two pieces by this next designer. Oh. Let's grab that. Steve Fabricant. Okay, we'll go with that. And this looks like there's actually a hole in it from that, which is completely heartbreaking. So let's look. Yep, that will definitely have to be disclosed. And these are just uh, long knit pieces with large buttons. You've got a purple and green, very interesting color choice there for this one. This one's a dress. Over here we have a second dress. And this one has a little bit of, um, I don't know, like stud, studding in it. There's that tag again. Again, a knit with large buttons. These are really interesting buttons too. Look at that. It's kind of like embedded. And it looks like this uh, does pretty well on uh, eBay. We're looking at a resale value for each of around $40. On Etsy, we're looking at probably closer to maybe 50 to 100 and Poshmark, no more than about 30. Okay, so in this section, we have Louis Ferrand. I'm gonna go with Ferrand. And uh, we have a knit jacket 
new with tags with very large buttons. We have another piece. This is a two piece suit. Same designer with some color blocking, very bright. I looked up these tags and it looks like pretty much all of these were probably made in the 1990s. Can't you just see like the supermodel Linda Evangelista wearing something like this? I could totally, totally see that. So here is the skirt for that one. And this is just a plain black skirt. Let's see, this one is really bright. Oof, look at that really bright pink, totally disintegrating from being in a closet for so long. And this one is linen, two piece suit. Here's another two piece suit. This one happens to be absolutely bright orange with some color blocking on the sides. And this very bright skirt. And finally, another very pink outfit. This time it is a suit dress. And again, here is that tag, Louis Ferrand. And let me see, I've got, I've got all of this written down. I'm not remembering all of this, in case you're wondering. So it looks like for each of these, eBay is probably going to be between $20 and $90 per outfit. Etsy, between $100 and $200. And then Poshmark, definitely below $50 for each one. So that's one P or one outfit, two three, four, and then five. So pretty good haul, especially the ones that have the, uh, the new with tag. Although again, with these coming apart, that is going to be very hard to clean up. So just have to work, work through it. Now, this next designer, hopefully everyone is going to recognize, and that is Oscar de la Renta. And this is an absolutely beautiful coat with sheath dress made from a wool blend with leather trim. And it is absolutely gorgeous. It's a longer piece with a coat that goes over this, this would be perfect for the working woman. Um, out of all of the pieces that I purchased, if I was to uh, steal one to wear, this would definitely be it. Now, Oscar doesn't do incredibly well um, for the resale game, especially because this is not necessarily a, uh, a vintage tag. This would be closer to the very late 90s, uh, very, very early 2000s. And so it would be something that you'd really have to decide, do you want to take the risk to put it on Etsy? Or would you just want to stick with possibly eBay? On eBay, pieces like this generally will go for between 30 and $50. On Etsy, you can command a little bit more than that. And then on Poshmark, uh, probably no more than like maybe $30 or $40. So this is the first Oscar de la Renta piece. Here is just a super easy to wear sweater, 1X. And it has embellished roses down the side. Here is a... New with tags, 14W, originally $328. And that is just a brown blazer that's long. This is a two-piece top and cardigan, 1X gray with embroidered flowers on it. And a final wool blazer that is a 16W with a great zigzag print. And that is all of my Oscar. 
a very, very cool next piece or next couple of pieces. I have some Valentino and I just think this is gorgeous. Valentino Miss V. Now the Miss V line was uh, in the early 1990s from the Valentino line. And this one is a wool dress and just the details that go into this with the different layers and the different types of stitching. It is just so beautiful. I would be scared to wear this out though, because I know I would absolutely ruin something like this. So a piece, a vintage piece by Valentino goes for between uh, maybe 50 and $180 on eBay. On Etsy, uh, between 50 and 200 plus. And on Poshmark, nothing above maybe 50. Um, and so this is just an absolutely beautiful line. If you ever find Valentino, I definitely think you should grab it. I just sold a vintage Valentino on uh, the real reel. I sent it into the consignment and it did very well. It was a men's wool jacket and I think it sold for over 200. So I got um, maybe 100 or 120 in commission. So I was very happy with that. This is another Valentino Miss V and this time it has the price tag on it. So that is dead stock. Here we go. And what dead stock, what you call that is, if it is new with tags, but it is vintage, they usually call that dead stock. And this is, it just feels so beautiful. And it's got a great print on it. So that is a Valentino suit along with the skirt. Here is another really exciting brand. This is Ascada. And Ascada was launched in Germany in the 70s. After looking at uh, these uh, different labels, it looks like they're probably in the 1980s. Uh, these were uh, these were created. And it makes sense because it was in the 80s where uh, Margarita, I want to say is her name. She, um, Margarita Lay, she really launched around the world with her pieces. And she became uh, really well known worldwide, especially in Hong Kong and the United States. And it, she's got some just very iconic looks like this really large type of embellishment is one of the things that really sets her apart. Um, so this would be a cardigan that just has some great faux jewel embellishments. Something like this, if you went to eBay, would range between 40 and 150 On Etsy, probably almost uh, 200 if you if you waited for the right buyer. And on Poshmark, nothing more than 50 But just what a wonderful, beautiful piece. Here is another Escada. And this is just the jacket. And again, the attention to detail, it's got the lining that has it on it, or the lining that has the name on it. It's got the little pocket square that goes inside, a beautiful, beautiful paisley print. And my last Escada piece, I'll show you there, Escada, is going to be a silk two-piece like work suit. with that detail right there in the waistline. Almost to the end of it, I have uh, this pile of clothes and some shoes and a purse to go over. But we're gonna start out this pile with Givenchy. And again, I'm sure you've all heard of the brand. And this is exciting because this is N plus Givenchy. So obviously for plus size. And Givenchy does very, very well in the reselling. Out of all of the designers that I got, they probably will do, hopefully do the best, um, not only because of the name, but also because it is plus size. So you have this one, this jacket and uh, dark brown, perfect for work, a blazer. And it looks like on eBay, uh, you're looking at between 80 and $150. 
On Etsy, you're looking at 80 and 150, so it's pretty much the same. And then on Poshmark, there are a few outliers for more, um, but it looks like probably around $30. So again, this type of vintage might not be the best for Poshmark. So here is a green blazer. Here we have a linen blazer. And I think we have the uh, skirt for this later on, but we'll have to see. Here is going to be a new with tags suit. So this is a pinstripe suit with the tag still on it. And new back in the 80s, I did check the tags. Uh, these were made probably in the 1980s. $1,470. And this is a brand that has aged very well. So people are looking for it and the resale value is very high. Here we have a plaid, very long tunic style silk jacket. Another plaid this time in a deep green. And that comes with the skirt. Now this is a brown skirt. I'm wondering if this goes with the first blazer that we looked at. I bet it probably does to make a full suit. And that is gonna be longer. I don't think I have a blazer that goes along with this gray. Oh, and look how nice. See, when they wrapped that around there, there's no stains on that. That was very smart. And then here was the piece, that, the linen piece that I said I had the skirt to. So here's kind of the short skirt that goes along with that. So that's all the Givenchy I have. And then I have two pieces by St. John. And people are going to be probably well acquainted with St. John. Let me show you the two labels that I have. This first one, it's really pushing it to say that it's vintage because it was probably made in the very late 90s, early 2000s here. But uh, one of the reasons that I'm really excited for this is this is the Santana knit. It was a new material that uh, Marie St. John came up with, and it is a wool and rayon uh, yarn that she started knitting with, and it really took off. I think one estimate in its heyday, which was like, you know, the 90s, um, St. John, 70% of their sales was from their Santana knit. So if you do have uh, that knit... It definitely the resale value goes up. So for a sweater like that, we're probably looking at maybe uh, 40 to $60 on eBay. Uh, similar on Etsy if you want to sell it on Etsy um, because it, it's not necessarily a vintage piece. And then on Poshmark, uh, you know, 10 to $30 maybe. Now this, I had a hard time identifying as St. John. It really helped me out. I did see this and I thought, hey, I'm going to go on to the Vintage Fashion Guild, look up to make sure that is St. John. And it was. This is going to be a long gray wool sweater. And it definitely needs to be dry cleaned because I can see some, some marks on it to see if we can get those out. And again, we're probably looking at maybe like $50 for that. Really great return. Um, on that sweater. Now, I told you not all of the things that I got were uh, vintage and the next five pieces are not vintage, but you're definitely going to recognize the name on them. And these are all Johnny Was. Johnny Was does incredibly well. This company is known for having absolutely beautiful embroidery and beautiful colors for their pieces. So here is piece number one. Here is number two. These are all size uh, 1X and 2X, which is a great size. It really does very, very well online. This is a velvet piece. And that's another tag that they have. 
And this one, I think there's a little bit of staining on it that I'm going to take the dry cleaner and try to get off. I think there, uh, Johnny was 2X. And the final piece is a beautiful open tunic, kind of turquoise with absolutely amazing embroidery. And so um, anybody that resells and has, has had Johnny Was knows that it does very well online. Um, if I take it to eBay, uh, a pretty quick $70 to $80 if you hold out possibly closer to $100 $120. On Poshmark, not as well, uh, probably between maybe $30 and $50. So eBay is definitely uh, the place for me at least to go for this. I see this one. It has another little stain on it. Again, I'm going to take that in, see if we can get, get that out. Up first, we have a pair of vintage Gucci. Let me take these out of the box to show you. Made in Italy, and they've got the buckle on top. They are in absolute beautiful condition, a little bit of wear at the bottom. But look at that wonderful looking block heel and here's the second one now these are a size 7b uh, b means they are uh, standard width size 7 is a pretty good size i have often found that vintage shoes tend to be um, slightly smaller than the feet that we have today um, not sure why that might be just my luck or we might have larger feet today uh, I, I looked online to find out how much I could get for these, and my best guess would be on eBay between maybe $50 and $70. On Etsy, it can go up as high as maybe $150, and even on Poshmark, uh, shoes do rather well, so we're looking at possibly you know $60 or $70. So it would definitely be something that, that I would think about cross-posting. Uh, up next, I have three pair of the same brand. These are Manolos. And they are not in what I would consider great shape. Um, these, I think, are probably in the best shape. But as you can see, we've got a little discoloration right there on the heels. And on here, we've got some uh, the leather rubbing away. So again, not in great condition. That is one pair. Here is another these a little more worn. Now these, a little ouchy right here. Now for the Manolos, if they are in very good condition, uh, the vintage ones, you can get probably about a hundred to two hundred dollars on any of the different sites. Now because these are worn, you can see in there, not in great condition. I'm not expecting that much. I would say if I got, you know, 30 to $40 a piece for these, I would be very, very happy. And another reason for that are these are 36, size 36 and a half, which is uh, five and a half size in US. And that is a very, very small foot. Now, the last pair that I got, I just kind of threw it in um, I, they said five pairs, so I was in kind of a hurry. I grabbed these um, Ar Archie, and it turns out that these are not uh, vintage or probably not vintage. If these were in good shape, uh, they could go, you know, maybe 30 or $40 on any of the platforms. Uh, the problem is, is I didn't do the twist test on these, and as you can see, they're cracking on the heel, so those just aren't resellable. So I am just going to be uh, redonating those. They're probably, they could be worn a few times if somebody purchases them, but it would just not be something that I'd really want to, to resell. And my one loan bag that I purchased, um, this is also not vintage, but you are hopefully going to recognize the name in here. And it is, I'm going to give this a stab. I'm not great at names. I'm going to give it a stab. It is Bottega Vienta. Yeah, that sounds about right. And a uh, very, very well respected uh, brand. New purses go for $1,000. Um, this one is a crossbody. 
and it has the woven leather uh, strap detail. These are hand woven, and that's really what they're known for. I had a black body with that brown. It is in absolute wonderful condition. Like we're talking like almost nowhere whatsoever. And there's a couple of things that I would be able to do with this purse. When I have a very, very high end purse, I generally, you can sell it on Poshmark and eBay. I shy away from that just because there's so many ways that people can say, no, it's a fake or it could be sent back, um, you know, damage after a few wears. I've just really, I'm kind of gun shy about uh, designer purses on on those sites. And so if I was to take it to eBay or Poshmark, we're probably looking at uh, $120 or maybe even $150 for this purse, which would be amazing. But what I like to do is I like to send it into the real, real consignment, where I would get probably about 55% commission. And it would sell for probably around $500, which means I would make uh, 275 in commission. And that would be on the high end, obviously, you know, 200 or even 150 might be closer, you know, depending on how fast it sells. But that is definitely what I would be planning to do with this. So up next, I'm going to be going online and showing you uh, the resource that I use to date uh, the different pieces and also giving you a wrap up on hopefully what I can expect from uh, this entire purchase. So this website is the Vintage Fashion Guild, and that is at vintagefashionguild.org. And I recommend anybody that wears vintage or wants to resell vintage uh, go on the site to get acquainted with the different labels and the different designers that were making vintage. Now, the site is not super user friendly. It's not very intuitive. But what I do is whenever I go on, I just go straight to the label resource right here. And this is a library that contains all of uh, the different major designers that were creating vintage. And one of the great things about this is it has all of the tags dated for these different designers. So you can really find out uh, or hopefully find out when something was made. So for instance, if you have a piece by Acris, you can click on their name. It gives you a little bit of information. A lot of them have bios. So it gives you a little bit of information about the designer or the design company. And then down below, you see the different tags. So this is in the early 1980s, what a tag might look like. And then the changes in the 80s that was made. And then this is a more modern 2000 uh, tag. And so it really gives you an inside look into the designer and the label. So this is a lot of the times when I am dating something I will use this resource. It's not the only thing that I use because something else that I like to do is I like to check the style of a garment. And so different uh, eras, different decades have different styles. And to do that, a lot of times I will go onto Pinterest and I will look at some of the, um, the fashion during the decades and I will be able to identify maybe there's a print or a length that uh, coincides with a certain era in fashion. And that is also something that helps me out. And so again, the Vintage Fashion Guild, a website that uh, resellers should definitely acquaint themselves with. So finally, let's talk a little bit about the profits that I can hope to get from uh, this wholesale buy. So first up, I'm going to assume that I'm going to sell everything on eBay as a platform. And the reason I'm going to do that is just for simplicity's sake. It is my go-to platform where I post everything. Anything that is going to be cross-posted is first put up on eBay. So let's just say that I sell it all there. Now, uh, a couple of things that I like to do there is I do like to have best offer available to any buyers because I find that that can really uh, bring people in and they have a little bit more control over how much they spend on an item. And because of that, I usually price a little bit higher than what I'm expecting just because I, I do want a little bit of wiggle room of maybe 20 or 30% for anybody that wants to make me an offer. 
Um, also, another thing to think about is even though eBay, things can sell a little bit faster on there uh, when compared to other platforms, just because eBay is so large, uh, vintage can take a little bit longer to sell. The market isn't as large um, as uh, some of the other categories in clothes. More modern day athleisure, things of that nature can definitely sell faster. I've decided that there are 33 pieces of clothing I'm going to be selling, or that also includes outfits, 33 outfits, uh, four pairs of shoes, and one purse. I did take out a few of the items that had damage. Let's um, just kind of pretending that I wasn't able to get the damage out and they wouldn't be uh, good for reselling. So for example, uh, the Adele Simpson, which had the small hole in it, I took out. The Scossy that had the, um, the rust stains in it, I took out. Uh, just for the sake of it might not sell, I might not even be able to list it. For the items that I can list, if I went to the very, very bottom of what I said uh, can be expected, uh, the lowest, lowest price I would expect to sell it at, we're looking at uh, total sales of $2,095, very roughly. Now, if you take about 20% for fees and different things for that, uh, that puts you at $1,676. Now, there's two things that I need to subtract from that, and that, of course, is the cost of goods. For everything, I paid the wholesaler $250. And then I'm also going to assume that I'm going to spend probably around $200 in dry cleaning. And I know that's a very high number, but the truth is, is these, a lot of them are old and, and kind of dingy and have um, things wrong with them. And they just, they need to be dry cleaned and there's no way around that. So after subtracting all of those uh, different things from my profits, it looks like pure profit at the lowest is around $1,200. Now that I would say is a pretty great uh, profit, but also you have to think what kind of time is going to be involved in listing them. Vintage is different from modern day clothing when you're listing in the fact that the sizes represented on vintage clothing doesn't necessarily correspond to people's sizes today. So for instance, a size 6 or a size 16 might not exactly be a size 6 or 16 in today's market. And so because of that fact, you have to take very, very close measurements of everything. So on a dress, not only do you want to do the length and the bust, you also might want to do the shoulders, the, um, the waist, the arm length, um, or the sleeve length, I should say. Um, you have to be very careful in making sure you give a really accurate measurement so people can decide whether or not that garment is going to fit them, regardless of what the label says for the size tag on it. So listing these items does take a little bit longer than it would for a modern day piece. And then there, of course, there's the extra time to get them dry cleaned and to take care of them in that way. So it is more time intensive. So making $1,200 from a lot like this is, is very good. I think very well worth uh, my time. I really like working with vintage because I get excited about the designers and the different styles. And so this is something that is worth my time. It's not necessarily right for everyone. So I told you $1,200 would be the very, very lowest end if everyone sold, if everything sold for the very lowest you would imagine. Now, if I'm able to get uh, some of the stains out of the different pieces to sell more, or if I'm able to garner a higher price for some of these uh, pieces, we're looking, it could be as high as 2000 possibly even maybe $2,400 in, in profit. And that's just pure profit after all of the fees and everything else. So I would say this is a really good haul. If I get the opportunity from this wholesaler, I would definitely go back and uh, get more pieces. I'm also going to be taking several of these pieces to the event that I mentioned earlier, the pop, the vintage pop-up shop that I'm going to be involved with uh, this weekend, the 8th and the 9th. Again, this is in Brooklyn. All of the information is going to be below. So if you would like to come to see how these turned out, or if you just want to come and talk to me, I would love, love to see some of my YouTuber friends there. And so with that, I am going to sign off, but I will be back soon because I am going to be going through some of the different ways that I'm going to be prepping my items for that vintage pop-up shop. And so uh, stay tuned for more vintage, probably all the way through this week and next week.